of the new features that's been added um, into the new 2020 version of Photoshop is the Smart Portrait, which is part of the neural filters, as I'd always call them. These are filters which operate partly on your local machine and partly in the cloud, and they use Adobe's Sensei artificial intelligence to try to rework things that we would maybe struggle with as a Photoshop user. Um, I'm going to show you one example of that here. There are a few others as well. But first of all, before I use the filter, which is up here in the filter menu under neural filters, I am actually going to convert this over into a smart object with a quick right click, and I can convert to a smart object. You'll notice down the bottom corner there's no icon there, but if I convert to a smart object, you then see this little icon appears down there telling you it's a smart object. This is effectively the same as converting for smart filters up here, um, because when you have a smart object, it will then operate as a smart filter. So on this image, I'm just going to go to neural filters here and bring up the dialog box for the neural filters. These are brand new in this new version, so they've been out for something like 24 hours now. So obviously um, only had a limited amount of time to play with them, but some quite nice features in there I'd like to show you. In particular on this one, I just want to click in here to the beta filters. Now within here, there's a number of these. The smart portrait one is, is already open here. Unfortunately, there seems to be a little bug I've encountered already in that once you've expanded that, you can no longer shrink it up again. Um, and I expanded it. I suspect if I was to expand one of the others, it may well shrink that one and expand that instead. Um, but obviously, I, I haven't done that as yet. And as you scroll up and down, there's a few in here that are active, such as Makeup Transfer and Depth Aware Haze and Colorize. Um, there's also a whole load down here, which Adobe is effectively asking for feedback as to whether you'd like to see those in there or not. And the one we're interested in is right up the top here is the Smart Portrait one, which if I just turn this on a little second, which activates it, we can now make some changes to this image. And in this particular case, I'm not going to worry about the expressions, but I'd like to work on the subject. And, and in particular, I want to make this lady a little bit older. You know, I'm sure she probably wouldn't appreciate that, but uh, hopefully she won't mind too much. We're going to go into here, tick on Facial Age. And when I'm in facial age, what I'm going to do is just drag this slider across to show you how this works. If I bring it across, what you'll see at the top is a little spinning wheel up here. And this is the, the part where it works partly in the cloud. So it's connecting up, obviously, and Adobe's um, image processing in the cloud is, is doing its job. Now, I've over-exaggerated it slightly, and we'll see the changes on the image as we do in this. So in a second, that should finish, and we'll then be able to have a look at the changes live on the screen. Just give it a second. There we go. Now, once once these have been out a little while, I suspect that process may well get a bit quicker. It's, it's obviously brand new out this week, and there's probably a lot of people trying them out and playing with them at the moment. So I suspect their uh, their cloud servers are probably getting uh, quite a bit of traffic at the moment. But hopefully, once this has been out for a few weeks, that'll die off, and it will will be even faster. So you can see straight away that that has kind of aged a little bit. If I go down here, I can see the before and after. So that's the before. And that's the after. And it's kind of lightened up the hair. But it's done a little bit more than that. It's, it's also taken the hairline back slightly, you notice. And what it does down here is it does tend to kind of on the jawline and below the eyes, it does tend to kind of re increase those a little bit, a little bit back here down there. So it does make some subtle adjustments down there. Now, I might decide to compensate a little bit. I might decide to actually go with the hair thickness. Maybe the hair hasn't gone quite so thin. So I'll increase the hair thickness there, for example bring it back a little bit. And in terms of the lighting direction, I might decide to change that a little bit down here as well and just adjust the lighting a little bit. And we should see that change reflected there. So we've done a few simple changes there, like the facial age, the hair thickness and the lighting. We haven't gone with everything, but even just those simple changes, when I go down here and click preview changes, you can see the before and the after. And it, it does have quite a dramatic effect. And actually it's quite believable when you look at it as well. Now. Down the bottom here, you can output that as a smart filter. There's a variety of options in there, such as duplicate layer, duplicate layer with mask, etc. I'm going to go for a smart filter there and then just click OK. And that's output that to a smart filter. Now, the beauty of having it as a smart filter is you can click into here and just turn it off or turn it on again. Equally, if I wanted to re-edit this and make a few changes, I can double click where it says neural filters there, and that will allow me to then go back in there and make a few changes if I wanted to as well. Just to show you the reverse of that, we have another image here, um, slightly older lady, and we're going to use that one um, to, to reduce her age a little bit on here. So with this one again, I'm going to go in there, convert to smart object, and we'll go over to the filter menu and bring in the neural filters. Open that one up there. And once we're in here, I'm going to click in there, 
and activate the smart portrait. And in this case, the facial age, we're going to bring it down a little bit. In fact, I'll, I'll over exaggerate this just to show you just how powerful this uh, filter can be. So we'll take the filter age right now. Give it a second. It's just doing its processing in the cloud. Unfortunately, it just takes a couple of seconds. And then once that's done, so that's that's brought that down. I'm going to go in there, bring the hair thickness up a little bit. And again, I'll, I'll have a little play with the light direction just to uh, give it some automatic lighting. Change the angle on there slightly. And when you look at that, actually, you don't necessarily notice just how much of a change you've made until you go down here and look at the before and after. And that's the before and that's the after. And again, I'm putting it out to a smart filter. So if I click OK down here, you can see again down here, it's, it's a pretty significant change that we've made there. Um, it's quite a dramatic change. Clearly the same person, obviously, but, but we have kind of made some quite dramatic changes there to the face. Now, we've arguably overdone it a little bit because when you look in there at the neural filter, it, it is fair to say when you look at the slides, I took, I took in particular the age one right down and, and right up on the other image. So we have overdone it a little bit. And some of those, I think, maybe could use a little improvement. I've, I've had a play with the gaze one on a different image. And I found that it left the eyes on the image I used not looking quite so realistic. But I have seen it used in other images where it looked a lot better. And I'm sure as this has been out for a while, the algorithm will learn, it will improve, and you will probably find you get better results over the coming months. Um, but I think the, the ones we use there, the facial hair, the facial age rather, hair things, etc., they do a very, very good job and are very believable. So hopefully that's something that people might find useful.